Good morning and welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. We're so glad you've joined us for worship this morning. And I have some, as uh, an old television character used to say, I have some splaining to do. Uh, this morning, your video is not going to be the high quality that you have been used to because we have had a a terrible time this morning with our streaming system, which started with our internet being down, and it got more complicated after that. Anyway, we had the internet back up. We were not able to get the streaming system uh, settings reset in time. So what you are watching right now is our iPad focused on a screen in the sanctuary and you're but you're still getting the sound through our sound system so hopefully uh, this will be a pretty good uh, workaround for all the confusion this morning so all that is to say welcome to our Facebook live broadcast this morning uh, there will not be anything on YouTube until later when we can upload a video and uh, our phone service is not available this morning either. So, let us continue with that. You can still like us, comment on us, and share us the way you've always done. So, welcome again. I do want to call attention to several things that are going on in our congregation this week. Number one is this evening at six o'clock, our Dead Theologian Society will meet. And uh, this is just a, a social group that gets together once a month. And uh, we're still doing this online. Uh, so bring something to eat along with you and the beverage of your choice. And it's a social time on Zoom, and we always have a guest presenter to tell us about a theologian. So if you'd like to participate in that uh, and you don't already have that link, you can contact either me or Kathy Troutwine this afternoon. We'll try to make sure you get that Zoom link. Also, I want to remind you that on October the 10th, Following worship service, we have a congregational meeting. That meeting is being called to elect officers for the coming year. We will have those officers published to you next week, so you will have a list of who you'll be voting on beforehand. But many of you on October the 10th will be right here because we are resuming in-person worship October the 10th. We will still have all of our online services. We will have the hybrid worship that we did for a couple of months. Uh, we will still require masks in the building and social distancing, and we strongly recommend vaccination. We are going back in-person on October the 10th, and we're excited about that. So our congregational meeting will follow that worship service. If, you're, will, if you are attending that via Zoom, that Zoom portion of that will begin at 11.45. I think that's all the announcements I have. So there are a couple of more things to do. I want to recognize our worship team this morning. And I really want to thank our worship team this morning because everybody came in early knowing that we had no internet. And we finally worked around so that we could do this live. And I, I thank every one of them for being here early, for their patience, and also their work on working through the difficulties this morning. Back in the booth, we have Bill Troutwine on video. We have Jordan Ammons on sound, Kathy Arnold on the PowerPoint. Kathy Troutwine, our associate pastor, will be leading our liturgy and prayers this morning. And our music team is Cheryl Bruett, 
our organist, our music director, Gabe Irizarry, and our vocalist, Catherine Hecht and Amber Turcott. Thank you all for being here this morning and giving of your time and your talents. We have two staff recognitions this morning, staff anniversaries. Uh, if you would like a copy of all of this, there is a bulletin online, as usual, at trinityclearwater.com, and you can download that bulletin. But this morning, we are recognizing the anniversary of Jordan Ammons. And I'll just read what we have in the bulletin. It says, the first recognition this morning is the ubiquitous Jordan Ammons. We say that because Jordan does so many things for us that his touch is literally felt everywhere in the life of Trinity. You hear Pastor Andy, that's me, recognize him every Sunday for running our soundboard during worship. He consistently does this, whether we are together in the sanctuary or connecting through technology because of the pandemic. And that's not all. He's an elder. And in that capacity, he chairs our property committee as well as leading the preschool committee. Both are enormous jobs, so we thank you, Jordan, for five years of devoted commitment to Trinity. You are indeed a gift to us. Thank you, Jordan. And now, Kathy has a recognition to do. Am I on? Okay. The second recognition, we didn't want him to have to do his own, is today, well, October 1st, is the sixth anniversary for Pastor Andy. And I'll read to you what Molly Busey, our chair of personnel, wrote about him. He is definitely the gift that keeps on giving. So many gifts that we could not possibly list them all here. We could start by pointing to his leadership during a pandemic that seems to be endless. All facets of Trinity have continued sim seamlessly, whether through in-person meetings where possible or using Zoom. He has worked hard to put Trinity in the best possible position for the future with the establishment of a co-pastorate. Throughout the six years, we have all been beneficiaries of his leadership, his wisdom, his ability to educate, and his wonderful humor. We are blessed to have you, Andy. Thanks for your devotion to Trinity. And I'd just I'd like to add a few words of my own. i let you know how blessed I feel to have worked this last six years with Andy, especially during this last couple of years of the pandemic. You all don't know how much behind-the-scenes work he has done over this time, his expertise in theater and sound and visual has just made such a difference in bringing a much better experience to you this morning. Trust me, we have all experienced not only his, but Jordan's um, expertise and Bill's and Kathy's as we've tried to get you online. We were here at nine. We were going to record and put this service out. But through everybody working together, it got late enough before it could work that we figured we might as well go at our normal time. But the worship team was just so wonderful coming out early to make sure that we could worship together today. Andy, thank you for your leadership. I'm not sure we would have gotten through this last two years without you. you we couldn't have had a better pastor to lead during this time. Thank you. Oh, let us worship God. <laughs> We have come together today to worship God. Most of you not in this building, but in your own homes and even around the country, visiting others. And yet wherever we are, we are assured that God is with us. God does not just dwell in buildings, but God is with us wherever we are, whatever we do. So let us now call ourselves to worship. We have walked with you, O oh God for many parts of the world to this time and place. And we will walk with you, O oh God, into the world to serve all people. We believe, leave behind our old securities, 
We leave behind our reliance on worldly goods, and we will walk with you, O God, into the world to live with all people. We leave behind all which holds us back. We leave behind all which keeps us from following you, and we will walk with you, O God, into the world to work with all people. We leave behind the fears which bind us. We leave behind the hurts which damage us. And we will walk with you, O God, into the peace you offer to all people. God, who was dressed the spangled heavens, Suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space. We, your children, in your likeness, share in mental buzz with you. Great Creator, still creating, show us what we yet may do. Rally, rise up. Let us now go to God in a time of prayer. Sometimes our words and actions show how we are salt for the world. But then come those moments when we lose our flavor and our way. Let us confess our sins to our God so we might be restored and forgiven. Called to be your people, living God, why do we find it so hard to answer? You asked us to speak out in, against injustice, and we whisper against, we, we are afraid someone might hear us. You ask us to see the pain and poverty around us, but we close our eyes. You tell us that everyone and each one is created in your image, yet we persist in noticing the differences between us and others. God of the past and creator of the future, May we be the ones who go out into the world bearing your gifts of peace, of hope, of healing, of joy to everyone who is broken, even as we have been made whole through the gift of Jesus Christ. Let us now take a few moments of silence to lift up to God our own private cares and concerns.
and we continue praying using the words Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Touched by the healing hands of our Lord, filled with the grace of our God, led by the compassion of the Holy Spirit, our hearts are opened, and we discover we are forgiven and at peace with God. Those who are created to love the unlovable, those who are created to bear grace, those who are created to embrace all people, we receive our forgiveness, giving thanks to our God. Amen. Having been assured of God's love and grace, remember every day of your lives to take time to share that love and grace with others. We have a world that so much needs to feel God's love, and we can be the people that help spread it. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Ale, ale, ale. Well, now is the time uh, that we usually have Jeff Davis, our director of youth and children here. But Jeff had to stay home this morning in order to host the Wired Word Sunday school class on Zoom because we had no internet service here at the church. Uh, but he did text me uh, a message for you this morning during this time. He says, we want to invite all children and teens to join in the Zoom this week. Middle and high schoolers will Zoom on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And elementary students will Zoom on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And Jeff says that he will text every parent and deliver this week's supplies to your house. And if you're not a part of one of these groups and you want to be, you can email jeff at jeff.trinityclearwater at gmail.com. God bless you. God bless all of our youth and parents and families. And Jeff, God bless you for the work you do for our families and children. Now, as we prepare to hear the word read and proclaimed, let us take a few moments of silence, a time of silence to shut out those outside distractions that can sometimes make it hard for us to hear, a time to open our hearts and our minds that we might truly be filled with God's word to us. Let us now go to God in a time of silence, beginning and ending with the bell. Our first scripture lesson today comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Listen now for God's word to you in this reading of scripture. Are any among you suffering? 
they should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. For the word in creation, for the word in scripture, for the word within us, thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh. 
Thank you. That was beautiful. Now, Gabe, am I right in understanding that this was the commissioned anthem for this year's International Day of Peace? All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. Let us listen for God's word in our lives. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you hear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. And if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands or to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves. Be at peace with one another. For the word in creation, for the word in scripture, and for the word within us. Thanks be to God. For years I have been fascinated with quantum physics. On a very elementary and uh, elementary level, I have been 
reading about quantum physics and fascinated by it for years. Actually, it all began way before I ever began reading about it. Even as a teenager, I could get totally lost in a clear summer night sky wondering about time and space. And then in my 40s, I picked up a little book that was actually recommended to me by my wife, Peg, who had run across it in one of her college courses that she was taking at the time. It's a little book called The Dancing Wooly Masters by Gary Zukoff. And as, as much as I could understand in the book, it led me at that time to a paradigm shift in my view of reality. It was a shift in the way I saw the world that can only be described as a paradigm shift uh, that was life-changing. And this was, a, it was a, a simple shift, but not an easy one, from certitude to possibility. Because you see, as I remember the main focus of that book, it explored the differences between the old physics, which was Newtonian physics, and the new physics, which was quantum physics. And when I say new, it was hardly new. It had been discovered and thought about and developed ever since 1900 and even the late 1800s. But in a, in a gross oversimplification, my understanding of this difference between the two physics, the old physics and the new physics, is that the old physics says when faced with a question, one can objectively observe and be given enough information from that observation to arrive at a conclusion. In short, the old physics deals with certitude, that things can be certain. Now the new physics says that this is not so. New physics says that nothing can be observed objectively. That the simple fact that something is being observed changes what is being observed through the process of perception and interaction. Now, a simple example of this would be a parent and a child. Anybody who has children has experienced this, and many who don't have seen this dynamic. A child acts differently when their parent is in the room. This is an oversimplified example of how observation and presence changes the reality. But what this does is it, it creates uncertainty because there are variables within things. And so the new physics ends up dealing with probability and possibility rather than certitude. Now another way to put this is that we in our world are not merely observers of our reality, but we are active participants. Our Wednesday night study group right now is studying a book called Care for Creation, A Franciscan Spirituality of the Earth. 
I'll take just a moment to invite you to be part of that study. We do it on Zoom, and you can contact us to get the information if you would like to be a part of it. Well, last week, as we began that study, we read and explored about the interconnective, interdependent nature not only of the biosphere of the earth, but of the universe itself, of all creation. And even this interconnectivity and interdependence within our own bodies and between human beings. This reality that we are all interconnected and interdependent. And perhaps the most important for us to know about this is that we are not outside observers of these dynamics, but rather active participants. And being active participants, our actions affect and shape our environment, whatever that environment may be our participation in it shapes it and affects it. So, with all of that in the background, what does all of this have to do with John and Jesus? And with us? Well, could it be that, that we and John are looking for certainties. We're looking for certitudes that we can control. John wants to know that Jesus and his disciples are the ones who have the control of this message of the gospel. The certitude of it. But Jesus offers us possibilities that go beyond tightly drawn boundaries of us and them. In another place in the gospel, Jesus even says, I have come to give you life abundantly. And I have mentioned at other times and in other sermons that one meaning for this, the Greek word for abundant is beyond measure, which is just another way of saying without boundaries. Jesus comes to give us life beyond measure, without boundaries. And no matter how hard we try, whatever words we use, even our language limits God. But this doesn't mean we shouldn't at least be conscious that we are limiting God and limiting ourselves. God is greater than our feeble attempts to articulate God. The gospel is much bigger than our feeble attempts to articulate and live it. But if we're not careful, we can start sounding like John and saying, well, well Jesus, those, those people over there aren't doing it the way we do it. Those people over there, they, they practice communion the wrong way. They don't believe the right things the way we do, so don't you think we better stop them? Or the least we could do is send some missionaries over there and show them how to do it right. Now we call this kind of thinking gatekeeping, turf protecting, among other things. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with gatekeeping and turf protecting as, as long as we're aware that ours is not the only gate and it's not the only turf. 
What gets us in trouble is doing it without examining our own vested interest. What are we really protecting? Why is it so important to us? Are we protecting God? That may be a rather presumptuous thing, wouldn't you think? But I think more often than not, if we're really honest with ourselves, we discover that our vested interests have more to do with our own insecurities and our own need to control rather than someone else. In this class last Wednesday night, we briefly discussed a, a, a short film that I remembered and brought into our discussion. And I'll confess to you, I could not remember the name of the film. <laughs> and so after the class, I looked, I looked it up. A couple of other people did. And we actually found this brief film. I recommend it to you. You can find it on YouTube. It's called The Overview Effect. But briefly, what it is, is the overview effect. This is this phenomena that comes from people who have traveled in outer space. People who have gotten outside the Earth's atmosphere and looked back on Earth. And even those who have gone far enough away from the Earth on their way to the moon to look back and see the entire planet floating in space. This overview effect changes their life. They come back to Earth with a totally different perspective, having seen it from outer space. And they see that Earth is the only home we have, and that all of humanity with its amazing diversity, everyone inhabits this one home. As far as our, our climate goes and our environment goes, they can see that perhaps what really needs to be changed, what really needs to be saved, is not so much the earth, but humanity. Humanity needs to save itself from toxic gatekeeping and turf protecting and boundary drawing and become responsible participants within creation. And, and when we do this, we actually nurture the earth itself. I want to read a quote I ran across. It wasn't in this film, but it was a quote from Edgar Mitchell. He was one of the astronauts on an Apollo mission who was very involved in, the, in this film, The Overview Effect. But he said this about looking at the earth. He said, you develop an instant global consciousness, a people orientation an intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world and a compulsion to do something about it. From out there on the moon, international politics look so petty. And then he says, you want to grab a politician by the scruff of the neck and drag them out a quarter of a million miles and say, look at that.
We need a change of perspective. A change from certitude to possibility. To realize that we never know the big picture. But we still participate in it and affect it. Our God is too often too small. And as we change perspective, as Jesus changes our perspective, we can learn like John and the rest of the disciples that those other people just because they're doing it differently than us, are no less followers of the gospel. Amen. We now come to that time of the service when we remember that the word is all about response. How do we respond to God's word to us? And this church does that in so many ways. Yesterday, we were a vaccine site, vaccination site for Pinellas County Health Department. And because of that, some people that were local were able to get their vaccines easily. I actually had a phone call this week that asked us why, as a church, we would do this. And it's because we believe we are a part of the community and that we are called to help people. Some of our members went out this week door to door handing out flyers, letting people know, in both English and Spanish, that this opportunity was going to be there. We didn't have as many people as we hoped we would, but we can't control that. But there were some people that got vaccinations, including some of our members that got the the booster shot. This is who we are. We are constantly seeking for ways to show God's love in the world. And it is because of each and every one of you how you support this church with your time, your talent, and yes, your money. And we give thanks for that, your ongoing support, in spite of how difficult this last year has been. Thank you. Please join me in offering our resources and ourselves. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and we who live in it. Freely we have received and freely we give. Let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ the Son. And now let the weak say we are strong. Let the poor say we are rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, We give thanks this day for this opportunity to come together to worship, to be fed by your word, to be fed by our community. And we give thanks for the resources that makes it possible. We look around us and we see so many challenges and it can be overwhelming. 
but you have called us. You have called us to find ways to reach out and make a difference, to look for those that are suffering, that are struggling, that are hungry, that are cold, that are without houses, that are mourning. And we pray for those people. Help them to find the resources they need, not just financially, but emotionally and spiritually. Help us to feel your presence in our lives, giving us the courage to meet those difficult challenges, to stand up with people when people challenge us and ask us why we do what we do. We do it because of your love. We look around the world and we see so many differences, so many differences based on us and them. Help us to continue to realize that there is no us and them. We are all your children. And if we would only acknowledge that and work to make help other people acknowledge that, the world can change. We are in the season of peace, and yet we know there is little peace. Help us to find that peace within ourselves that then gives us the courage and the energy to go out and work for peace in others. We look at the creation, and we see what has been done to it, and we acknowledge our part in harming creation. Help us to find better ways to make a difference, to change our world, to change our world ecologically, and to change our world with each other. Because that is what Jesus called us to do. And in Jesus, we see the example of how we are called to live. Give us the courage and the energy to live in that love and peace. In Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Why, just this morning, we had a frantic exercise in the tension between certitude and possibility this morning. As we struggled to deal with our difficulties in streaming our broadcast. For a while, we were in the certitude of the way we had done it, and this is the way we, it has worked before, and we were all trying to make that happen. And nothing we tried seemed to work. And we finally kind of threw up our hands and, and somebody said, well, why don't we just get the iPad out and do it the way we used to? So then we started on that and we got the iPad out and we started running the sound cables and we set the iPad up to do it the way we used to do. And then Bill Troutwine says, well, why don't we just focus the iPad on one of our screens and they'll get the full effect of our video possibilities instead of certitudes even brought you this broadcast this morning Gary Zukoff who wrote The Dancing Wu Li Masters says what we actually discover is that the the way that we have been looking at nature is no longer comprehensive enough to explain all that we can observe, and we are forced to develop a more inclusive view. Now, I want to take those exact words except for one. What we actually discover is that the way that we have been looking at God is no longer comprehensive enough to explain all that we can observe, and we are forced to develop a more inclusive view, a view in which God is much wider, much more inclusive, much more evasively present than our limited understanding of God. Let's make that shift from certitude to possibility. Amen.